another phenomena which is very important is reflection i think reflection is a term which we all are very much aware of we have been using or we have been using mirrors in our life and we have been seeing our face uh, we have been seeing uh, you know like like this you can see a stand still clear water in this you can see a clear reflection of your hand of your face and we we know this phenomena now if we talk of reflection reflection is in layman's terms whatever light or whatever light from the object is falling on to that medium so that medium here in this case is the water and you are getting a very similar image which is you know uh, similar to the object you are placing in front of it now that's to uh, you say uh, what do you say uh, layman's term but if you talk of reflection the laws of reflection uh, there are basically two uh, laws of reflection the first one says so before i start with the law the first one is this is a mirror okay in our, our house we have mirrors so this is the mirror and in this mirror you have this purple color that is the incident ray of light falling onto the point p and from here the light is being reflected and the green light green uh, uh, color line is the reflected light so the first uh, principle or the first law rather of reflection states the incident ray which is this purple one the and uh, the reflected ray which is this the green one and the normal which is is the dotted one they all lie in the same plane yes so the plane is this mirror if you see here this particular incident ray reflected ray and the normal they all are lying on the same plane so that is the first law of reflection okay now the second law states that the angle of reflection that is this particular angle because this is the reflected ray so from normal you see take this part and this is the r so the angle of reflection r is equal to the angle of incidence that is the i basically if in this diagram if you can see here the angle this particular angle that is the angle of reflectance is equal to this particular angle which is the angle of incidence okay and these laws uh, of reflection are valid for all types of reflecting surfaces the surface may be smooth or rough but these laws are valid it may be a um, plain uh, mirror or it may be a curved mirror it may be cylindrical or it may be a spherical mirror now the surface uh, may be anything it may be a spoon it may be a wall or even a book so there is some sort of reflection on a shiny glossy substance so this laws practically are of, of reflection are valid for all types of surfaces okay so here if if the example says of a smooth plane surface it doesn't mean that this laws of reflection doesn't apply for rough surfaces no it will apply for the rough surfaces as well now let's see if if we have multiple rays of light falling onto the plane so if you see this is another uh, ray of light falling onto the plane now the point where this particular the second ray of light is touching at that point perpendicularly you can have the dotted line that is the normal so normal is always perpendicular to the plane of the mirror or the plane of of this surface whatever it is okay so normal will be always perpendicular at a, at right angle to it now uh, if if uh, you see here so this is the angle so if you draw the angle the angle will start somewhere here and end uh, uh, till the normal and from here if you this particular angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflectance and similarly for other wavelengths also we see the same feature and it maintains the it follows the both the uh, laws of reflection okay so the next phenomena is refraction uh to talk about this phenomena i'll just start with a very uh, small story in the year 2002 a brazilian mechanic uh, had 
a light bulb moment and came up with a way of illuminating his house during the day without any sort of electricity using nothing but a plastic bottle filled with water so you can see here uh, this person is sitting here and uh, you can see that these are nothing but uh, you know plastic bottles which you use in our day to day life they're filled with water and this bottles you know you can see the light is coming inside and the light this is basically a sunlight falling onto it and this light is is spreading uh, in the entire room and it is acting like a bulb so you can practically replace uh, this bottles filled with water plastic bottles rather uh, with electric bulbs and why this is happening so this is something interesting so in another example in early 19th century lace makers relied on water filled glass fairs to focus or condense light uh basically they that time they used uh, candle lights as you can see here to focus this candle light onto small areas of their work in order to help them see fine details more clearly now this this uh, explains so uh, as this person is stitching and they require light to be focused onto a very small area so that their stitching can be done and that is the time when lace maker used this glass fair filled with water and placed it in front of a candle light in which used this or which was used to condense the light right now this condenser is uh, was made in 1800 definitely and which consists of several glass fairs arranged in a circle around a candle stand enabling the light from the candle to be focused or concentrated um uh, into the several bright spots the curved surface of the glass fair function as a large collecting surface of the light rays which are then refracted uh, uh, towards a common focal point right so basically it it worked more or less similar to a convex uh, lens or a convex yeah basically a convex shaped lens so condensing or collecting lens are also utilized in modern microscopes and other optical instruments to concentrate the light and relying on the same principle of refraction as it was done uh, as early as in the 18th century uh, by by lace makers condenser so this two example uh, why i just gave at the beginning is they used the phenomena of refraction they capitalized this phenomena of light and then used it to the benefit of it right so in the first case the the light which was basically straight light coming from the sun that light was was coming onto a plastic bottle filled with water and was getting refracted in the entire dark room equivalent to a electric bulb and in the second case we see when we place a glass sphere filled with water in front of the candle or any light source this glass spheres act as convexing uh, uh, lens basically and convex lenses what they do is they converge all the rays of light onto a small focal point and that is why the small area becomes brighter right so coming to the phenomena of refraction so refraction as the name says when light travels from a denser to a rarer medium so if i say or rather inverse if i say in this case from a rarer to the denser medium rarer is the air and the denser is the glass when light travels from a rarer to a denser medium it moves towards the normal so the angle which is the theta 1 angle of incidence is theta 1 and this is the angle of refraction so you see the theta 2 the theta 1 will be greater than the theta 2 and if the rays of light is traveling from a denser to a rarer medium it will move away from the norm so the light path would move away from the normal if it is traveling from a denser to a rarer medium so uh, for example if i if i consider this two cases if rays of light is coming in the reverse direction then what will happen 
this this angle will be again you know that the angle of incidence will be from inside now in this case angle of incidence will be less or smaller than the angle of refraction which is outside so in simple terms rays of light you know when it is falling uh, or when it is coming from a rarer medium and it is going to the denser medium it will move this ray of light will move towards the normal and vice versa similarly if you can see here air and this is a glass filled with water so whatever rays of light the angle of incidence you see here is greater compared to the angle of refraction and then this angle is less and that is why the rays of light you know in the denser medium is closer to the normal that is been explained here i will also show a small video so this particular animation you can see here this is a glass rod dipped in uh, uh, basically a beaker which is filled with two different types of medium now when it is uh, in the below is water and on the top it is oil so we know that if we have to understand the refractive index is uh, is different and it's a physical property of all the medium the refractive index of air refractive index of oil and refractive index of water they are all different now the same when it is perpendicular you see it is almost like a straight but the moment it is going to the other angle you see the the portion which is in the oil it is being shifted and the portion which is in water it is also shifted but but this shift is again different from the glass rod which you see in the air so this is just because the rays of light which is passing this medium as the refractive index of this medium is different and also the refractive index of this medium is different the deviation of the light path happening in this two medium and and coming from air is different right so uh, you have uh, this this small video and based on this movement of light path uh, we can say the incident ray and the and the refracted ray and the normal as previously in the in the case of reflection they have to all lie on the same plane so this is all in the same plane incident ray, ray the reflected ray and the normal they are also in the same plane and as well as the ref refracted ray they are in the same plane the angle of refraction is related to the angle of incidence so angle of refraction is theta 2 angle of incidence is theta 1 if you say sin of theta 2 by theta 1 is what is uh, the speed of light that is the speed of light uh, in the, in the uh, uh, second medium and divided by speed of light in the first medium so if you can see by this expression you can also calculate the speed of light so if you say sin theta 2 theta 2 is the angle of refraction in the glass so basically sin theta 2 is in glass the so speed of light in glass divided by sin theta 1 that is theta 1 is in air is equal to uh, this side is also divided by speed of light in air and if we go by this expression we end up with an expression which is n2 sin theta 2 is equal to n1 sin theta 1 now this n2 and n1 are the refractive indexes of this mediums respectively so that is why n2 is the refractive index of the glass and theta 2 sin theta 2 is the is the angle of refraction is equal to the refractive index of air uh, multiplied with the sin of the angle of incidence in air and this particular expression is known as snell's law right so snell's law is if you if you uh, expand on the previous ideas the refractive index of a transparent substance or material is defined as the relative speed at which light moves through the material with respect to its speed uh, in a vacuum by um, convention the refractive index of a vacuum is defined as having a value of 1 and which serves as a universally accepted uh, what do you say a reference point okay 
Now the index of refraction of other transparent materials commonly identified by the variable is, is this n and is defined as by the equation which is the refractive index is equal to C by V where C uh, is, is as you can see here C by uh, this is the V. Now C is the speed of the light in the vacuum and V is the velocity of the light in that particular material, right? So because the refractive, uh, what do you say, index of a vacuum is defined as one by default and the light attains its maximum speed in vacuum, uh, which is like devoid of any material or any resistance, the refractive index of all other transparent material exceeds the value of one and can be measured by a number of techniques. For most practical purposes, the refractive index of air, that is 1.00003, or you can say roughly as one, is so close that of a vacuum that it can be empl uh, employed or it can be you know, assigned to calculate refractive indexes of unknown material. So the measured refractive uh, index or indices of several common transparent materials are, uh, uh, I'll be talking in the next slide uh, or uh, in the following slide where I'll show you a comparison of the refractive index in the different medium. And uh, it also the materials with higher refractive indexes slow the speed of light to a greater degree than those where uh, the materials are said to be, uh, what do you say, are exhibit more refractive and they exhibit a larger angle of refraction for the incoming uh, light rays passing through uh, an air interface. Okay, so this is what is important. Uh, you have to always keep, uh, keep in mind is materials with higher refractive indices, indices, right? They slow the speed of light to a much greater extent than those with lower refractive indexes. So if the refractive index is higher, it would be a more denser material. The speed of light traveling through that material will be slower. That is the simple fundamental concept. Okay. Now, once we have understood about refraction, we have also understood about reflection in the previous slides. So there is a term called total internal reflection. Now, in the previously, we saw the refractive index and the angle of incidence, they, according to the Snell's law, they, there was a deviation in the light path when traveling from different uh, medium denser to rarer or even from rarer to denser. And based on that, the deviation can be calculated. Now, if, if based on the Snell's laws of reflection, refraction rather, for, for uh, uh, critical angle, so suppose uh, you know, say the theta two, which you're seeing here, the angle of refraction is, is equal to 90 degree. Then if we just fill that uh, instead of the theta two, we give nine, 90 degrees, sine 90 degree. So in this case, what we can see is uh, when at a particular angle, so this is the angle that is the theta one, this theta one can be calculated. How it can be calculated? Because we know the theta two is 90 degree and we, by, by putting this expression, we know the refractive index of this two material and then we can calculate the theta one. This theta one is basically the critical angle. So it becomes theta C. And that at this critical angle of incidence, the rays of light coming onto this, will uh, the refractive angle will be uh, perpendicular with respect to the normal and it will be parallel to the surface. So it basically this is the junction of both the media, the rays of light will be parallel to it, passing through it. Now, if we increase this critical angle, what will happen? So if I further increase the critical angle, what will happen? Whatever rays of light, it was supposed to go to the another media it will be reflected back into the same media. So this is the phenomena of total internal reflection when your theta one, you can see here the theta one is greater than the critical angle. So when your theta one exceeds or increases or is, is more than the critical angle, what will happen? We'll have a phenomena of total internal reflection. 
Okay, so an important concept in optical microscopy is obviously a critical angle of reflection, which is necessary uh, a factor to consider when choosing whether to use what type of immersion or what type of objective, like basically a dry objective or an oil immersion objective. Okay, so upon passing through a medium of high refractive index into a medium of lower uh, refractive index, the path taken by light waves is determined by the incidence angle with respect to the boundary between the two media, as I was uh, telling here, showing here. Okay, now if the incidence angle increases past a specific value, that is the theta c, which is the critical angle, right? What will happen? It reaches a point at which the angle is so large that no light is refracted into the medium of lower refractive index, rather the entire light is re reflected back onto the same medium. And this particular phenomena is called total internal reflection. So a quick uh, food for thought is total internal reflection is commonly used in fiber optic cables for transmitting signals or rays of light for a very, very long distance without any practical loss during transmission. They use this phenomena of total internal reflection and in the form of liquid light guide cables or fiber optic cables. Okay. Now, refraction, as I was talking, that will have different media with different refractive indexes. So you can see here as air has is very, very close to that in vacuum. So we usually say roughly it is one uh, refractive index. Water is 1.33. Oil is 1.5. Glass is 1.52. Okay. So the higher the optical density uh, is equals to low or the less uh, speed in the velocity of light transmitted within the uh, material. Okay, so this has to be kept in mind when you're talking of refraction.